So please welcome the stage, Nicholas DeSanto! Thank you very much, guys. Uh, I'm trying to read the room. Do you guys like the world? No. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, listen, I don't want to alarm anybody, but I've been watching the news, and it turns out that uh, diversity doesn't work, uh, like ever at all. Uh, because the media, they have a difficult job. All day long, they bang on about how great diversity is. But in the evening, they show us the news, which uh, might as well be called diversity gone wrong. Uh, listen, I don't want to give it all away, but it's something like this. Hello and welcome to the news. Tonight, we have uh, concentration camps in Western China for ethnic Uyghurs, sectarian violence in Kashmir, Hindu lynched in Bangladesh, Christian lynched in Pakistan, civil war in Afghanistan, Syria, and Iraq, sectarian political deadlock in Lebanon, in Rwanda, mass graves discovered, in Bosnia, mass graves commemorated, in Darfur, mass graves are being dug right as we speak, and uh, in America, systemic uh, racism has somehow led to looting of electronic shops. Uh, <laughs> Escalation in Eastern Ukraine, constitutional crisis in Catalonia. And in sports, an all-white Italy beat England at Wembley to win the European Football Championship. Okay, I'm afraid that's all what we have time for. Thanks for watching, and remember, diversity is great. By the way, everything in that news bulletin did happen. Right-wing comedy is very fact-based, actually. Uh, do you remember the Euros final match? What a day that was. I mean, diversity was supposed to win, wasn't it? Because, I mean, the media tell us a lot about why diversity is great without providing any example or concrete proof of why it is great, because it's not. But uh, sporting glory is supposed to be the only trade-off, right? They're like, hey, hey, you, yes. You are becoming an ethnic minority in your own homeland? You, you too, yeah. Feel alienated, can't even recognize the neighborhood you were growing up on. Can't even read the shop signs because they're in another freaking alphabet. And you're openly expected to welcome and embrace your replacement. Otherwise, you're called a racist. Well, in return, diversity is going to win some medals and trophies for you. So the stage was set. Nobody said this was going to be easy, guys. <laughs> <laughs> The stage was set for diversity to triumph. You know, they brought the royal family into Wembley. The Royal Air Force flew the Red Arrows jets. They suspended COVID restrictions. Do you remember? The government was like, hey, you, yes, I know I stopped you from saying goodbye to your terminally ill father. And I stopped you from going to the subsequent funeral. OK, stop crying, please. Now, get in the stadium. We need to fill up the stadium. We have a trophy to win. The script was for diversity to win, but there was a little problem. Nobody had shared the script with the Italians. So when the Italians saw the script, they were like, nah, cogito ergo sum, which roughly translates as, I don't think so. Yeah, the Italians. That was the biggest English party ruined by the Italians since Henry VIII's wedding parties, number two to six. I mean, he, he went ahead with his wedding parties, number two to six, but they were much more low-key as half Europe um, boycotted them, following uh, advice by Rome. Um, no, I was so proud of being Italian that day. Uh, and it's not easy because as an Italian, every day you wake up, you're already at maximum national pride level. Uh, we have been like that ever since we invented civilization, <laughs> art, and roads. Uh, but that was a good day. That was a good day. Um, some of you aren't on board, I can sense it, but this is already going better than it did at Goldsmith University campus. So. I guess I'll be fine. 
I'll be fine. Uh, that shit is on YouTube, by the way. <laughs> you think I'm joking. Um, but what I mean is that the media don't tell us um, all the truth sometimes. You know, like they never tell us the advantages of a homogenous society. How about this? Have you noticed a homogenous nation never experiences genocide? <laughs> It's not nothing, is it? It's not nothing. I mean, it's very, very difficult to commit genocide when everybody is of the same genos. You know? It's like, uh, hello, Lars. Hey, Bjorn, what's with the knife? I'm starting a genocide with you. I mean, with you being my first victim, that's what I mean. What are you talking about? We share the same ancestral roots, the same culture, the same worldview. Oh. <laughs> Don't I feel silly? I just hope my genocidal intentions were not, were not caught on CCTV. Don't be doffed. We don't have enough criminality to justify such an expensive intrusion of life. The government into the lives of citizens. What a boring country we have. If you want to learn more about the advantages of a homogenous nation, you can read all about it in my latest book, entitled, Boring Countries Sent No Head Choppers to Syria. <laughs> it's a working title. But, um, yeah, the, the media don't tell us that stuff, but the media show us woke commercials. Yeah. Is it me or every couple in every TV commercial is now interracial? <laughs> Are they trying to tell us something? Yes, we get the message. Black guys with good jobs and nice houses prefer white women. <laughs> we get the message. But it's not a good message, is it? It's not a good message. But this is what happens when woke activists get involved with the free market. It all started with the Barbie dolls. Some of you are old enough to remember, it was a few years ago when they went after Mattel. You know Mattel, the manufacturer of Barbie dolls? Was like, hello, is that Mattel? Listen, you impose an unobtainable body image onto our little girls, make them grow up and feel horrible about themselves. You should be ashamed of yourselves. Also, why aren't you making enough black Barbies, you racist bastard? <laughs> Who is this? We are intersectional activists, and according to our intersectional theory, black women, by being black and women, are twice as oppressed by the white patriarchy. And right now, these black women are missing out on a good ch chunk of oppression because you are not providing the tools of oppression. For God's sake, young people are paying good money to study this crap at universities and you are contradicting our theory. Come on! Yeah. I don't know. W would, you, would you buy a house from a female architect? Because... No. No, no bear with me. No, no, laugh quickly, my time is limited, but... Because feminists argue that playing with Barbie products alters little girls' perception of reality and that stays with them well through adulthood. Now, I don't know if you've ever seen a Barbie dollhouse. It's lacking an entire wall on the front side. <laughs> and, and the elevator, the lift is hanging by a flimsy thread. I don't know. It, does the Royal Institute of British Architecture know about this? <laughs> I mean, if feminists were, I mean, they are never right, but if they were right, I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to set foot in an, in an elevator made by a female engineer. No. Um, listen, guys, uh, I don't want to alarm anybody, but there's a lot of racism going on. I was, uh, it's got to stop now. Um, I was talking to this friend of mine who is a member of, um, one of the communities. <laughs> okay. I, haven't, I haven't said what he said, but... So he was like, listen, listen, we used to be a British colony. We used to be part of the empire. So we helped Britain accumulate a lot of wealth. 
But today, when a member of the British public sees one of us on the street, do you think that's the first thing that crosses their mind? Because it isn't. I said, oh, okay, I see your point. Listen, during the Second World War, we fought for the British troops. We, we fought alongside British troops in war theaters thousands of miles away from our homeland. We helped Britain win the Second World War. But today, when a member of the British public sees one of us, is that the first thing they remember? Because it isn't. I said, yeah, I, I, I get your point. That's a good point. Listen to me, he said. I'm not finished. <laughs> After the Second World War, there was a big labor shortage in Britain. So we came over here, we settled here, we started doing jobs that were often dangerous, dirty, difficult. But today, when a member of the British public sees one of us, is that the first thing they remember? Because it fucking isn't. I said, all right, all right, no need to swear. I said, uh, let me tell you one thing, though. You groom and rape 10,000 underage white British girls over a decade in 10 cities, and the British public will not let you forget about that. <laughs> They're like a dog with a bone. <laughs> I know, I know, I'm the bad guy. <laughs> I'm the bad guy, yeah, that's right. Now, are you enjoying the Olympics? <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> Thanks for your trust. No, I prefer the Summer Olympics. Here's what happened in the Summer Olympics that uh, I can't forget. Um, I can't get my head around it. Basically, the German female gymnastics team decided to ditch their leotards for unitars. They started covering shoulder to toes, covering the legs basically, and they said they were doing this to combat objectification of women. So basically, for you perverts who were hoping to look at their long, bare, supple legs, this is bad news from now on, but if you were hoping to look at their camel toes, it's business as usual. <laughs> Um, listen guys, uh, I don't want to alarm anybody, but my time is coming to an end. Uh, being British uh, sets you up for a lifetime of disappointment. Uh, you have a queen whose official title is a defender of the faith. That's even uh, written on your coins in Latin, of course. Um, but she never does that. Uh, you have a Church of England, which is an apology for a church. Um, we kind of covered this, remember? <laughs> and you have a conservative government, which is anything but. Uh, so my hope is that uh, one day, uh, at the end of your life, your um, otherwise uh, hopefully long and fulfilling life, you will look back at this evening and think, well, at least that right-wing comedian was the real deal. Uh, <laughs> you've been a great audience. Uh, thank you very much.